Now before I open up the Project 2013 program, you need to know that the operating system we're working in is Windows 8. Now to be able to open it up, you can either create a shortcut here on your desktop or add it down here on the taskbar, the project program. You can see when I hover over it, Project 2013. To do this, go down to the bottom left hand corner until you see a pop-up that says Start. Now this is Windows 8.0 and 8.1. They're going to bring back the Start button because a lot of people were frustrated that the Start button was taken away. So hover back down in the lower left hand corner unless you have the Start button in Windows 8.1 until you get the uh, Start pop-up, click on it. Then in the Start Tile window, go ahead and drag to find your program, Project 2013. And if you don't see it here, but you know you have it installed on the computer, just go ahead and right-click in a blank area and go down to All Applications. Click on that. It'll show you all the applications that have been installed on your computer. In any case, it's right there. Right-click on that, because if I don't right-click on it and I click on it, of course, it'll open up the Project 2013 program, but when I close out of it, I have to do all that work hover in the lower left hand corner, scroll all the way back here to click on it again and no, I'd rather go ahead and add it to my desktop and like I said you can pin it to the taskbar down at the bottom in the desktop view or you can go ahead and the other option is to click on open file location and there's the shortcut that's in the uh, start tile menu that if you want to add that to your desktop here just go ahead and give it a right click and go down to send to and send it to your desktop or you can just click on it and drag it and you see in the pop-up below the icon that I'm dragging it says move hold down the control key and it switches to copy because if you move it out of the start menu in the start tile view then you won't see it there so we want to copy it over and then let go and because I already have it there it wants to know if I want to replace it no we'll just go ahead and uh, skip this file and there you go you have it on your desktop and then down below on the taskbar that only takes a single click to open up the program. This one takes a double click, so whatever works best for you. Double click. Now by default, every time you open up the project program, you're going to be in the Gantt chart view here. You can see it over here on the view bar. But before we go over the view here, the default view, let's go ahead and cover the entire view for project by starting in the upper left-hand corner and working our way from left to right and then top to bottom. So in case if you forget what program that you're in, you got the logo up here for project, you can see the P there, and then over to the right we've got what's called the quick access toolbar. It's called that because you can quickly access any command on it in a single click. Like there's the save, you can see the pop-up, and then the shortcut, undo, redo, and I'll show you how you can customize this in a later training video. And then over to the right you have the temporary name of the project, like project 1, project 2, until you save it, and you give it a name like my spiffy project, and then you've got the dash, and then the actual name of the program that you have open. So you've got it here, the logo, and then the actual name, so you know what program you're working in. And then of course over to the right you've got the help, the minimize, restore down, close out. And then below that you've got what's called the ribbon. It contains a lot of commands, but the commands are broken up by task, resources, reports, project, view, and you have what's known as contextual tabs. These are tabs that are going to be in color that only show up depending upon, well, in most cases, what view you have selected down below or that you're in. And we're in the Gantt chart view, so we have the Gantt chart tools, okay? In any case, when you go ahead and you select a tab as you're bouncing around, and by the way, that's why that's called above the Quick Access Toolbar, because if I want to access a command and it's on the Task tab, but currently I'm on the Report, I have to come over here and click on the Task tab to go ahead and click on a command here, but if I just go ahead and add it, to the quick access toolbar I don't have to bounce around from tab to tab to be able to get from one command to the next well I would say just go ahead and customize this with more popular commands in any case so on the task tab you can see it's divided up into what are called groups you have got these lines here and within the lines at the bottom is the name of the group so that's the font group pertaining to the font you want to make it bold italics underline give it a pretty color the font type size and so on now if there's more to the group than what meets the eye you could say less popular commands, you'll see in the lower right hand corner a little arrow. That's the expandable dialog box button. When you click on it, it expands it and it gives you more options. Well, it also gives you the uh, same commands here that you can see like the font, the size, there's the font, there's the size, but also additional ones like strike through and background pattern. Okay, let me go ahead and close out. 
And then over to the right, just above the ribbon, you got the sign in. So if your version of project is something that you would rather sign in to be able to access it and also additional features, well, that's how you can do it right there. And then, of course, restore down and close out. Now, this is for the inner file that you have open. So if I go ahead and close out of here, it takes me backstage, but it didn't close out of the program. To close out of the program, I click on the outer X, not the inner X, which brings up a good point. As you recall, we had a bunch of tabs up at the top, and the first tab over to the left-hand side was the File tab. You see the arrow here, and when you click on it, it takes me back to the front stage, what's known as the front stage, the main working area. When I have things I want to work on about the project's environment, like options, and maybe project's properties, like typing in keywords so it's searchable, or maybe the author or the company, you go ahead and you click on the File tab, it takes you backstage. And part of going backstage is that when you close out of a file that you're working on, you want to open up or create a new file, come down to new, and you get, well, the blank project template, which is what we started off with every time you open up project. Or you can go ahead and do a new one from an existing project, and we'll cover these other templates, but we'll keep it simple, and we'll click on blank. And we're back to where we started, okay? And this time it says project 2 because we didn't close out a project entirely. And so it gives you a generic name until you go ahead and click save and actually give it a name again like my spiffy project. So you have all these tabs here that are all workable in the front stage view when you want to go ahead and print it or set up the options for the environment of project click on the file tab it wipes out the front stage view so now you're backstage working behind the scenes as it were and being able to go ahead and uh, set additional information up like information over here for the project like advanced properties and you can go ahead and add the title subject author manager and so on I'm going to go ahead and click cancel, click on the back arrow, and we're back to where we started here. And then below the ribbon, we have what's known as the timeline. And the timeline is a high-level view of your project that is used to display key tasks only, not every task, because if you do, it becomes overcrowded and it defeats the purpose. Just only certain tasks that you would like to focus on. And then down below, we've got what's called the Gantt chart view. Now, it's interesting, they call it the Gantt chart because over to the right-hand side, it'll chart whatever information or data that you place over here. Like when you type in a task and you set the start date and the duration of the task, it's going to chart it and say, okay, it starts over here at this time. And you can see you've got the time scale here, the month, and then down below you've got it by weekdays, and it could be every other day, every four days, every five days. I'll show you how you can customize that. Well, you can right-click on it and say that you want to go ahead and zoom and look at it every two weeks, month, three months, in any case, I'm going to click Cancel. So that way, if you want to be able to see the entire project that's been charted over here in the Gantt chart of the Gantt chart view, because the Gantt chart view includes both the table here to enter in the data, so the chart has something based upon so it can chart it over here to the right-hand side. Okay? You've got the split bar in between so you can see more of the table where the data that you're entering in, that includes, well, again, the task name, the start date of the task, how long it's going to take, and then the finish date, predecessors, and you can see it goes, well, all the way over to adding additional fields. I'm going to go ahead and click and drag this back, and then double-click really fast, and it snaps, depending on how close it is to the right-hand side of one field or the left. Whichever is close, that's where it snaps to. Now, when you want to go ahead and switch views, and you're like, okay, I got the Gantt chart. Let me go ahead and take a look at other views. Well, we're talking about views, so it would make sense to me to come up here and click on the View tab, and depending upon what view you want to look at, you've got Team Planner, Resource Sheet. It's all pertaining to resources. They're in the Resource Views group. And then for Task, in the Task Views group. And you can go ahead and click on Other Views and go to More Views and see them there. Okay. Or click Cancel for me. If I'm on the Task tab or any other tab besides the View tab, it's just easier for me to come over here. And you can see the name of the current view that I'm in and right-click on that and you get a shortcut list of views that you can go to, including, or the least of which, is more views, whatever's not in that shortcut list there. And go ahead and select it, click Apply, or double-click on it to change it. And you can right-click on it, and that view bar, or what's called a view bar, is collapsed, because when you select view bar, it checks it and it expands it, so you can go ahead and have it visible and be able to click and change your views there and even the arrow down below that you can scroll down to get all the way to the bottom to do more views to bring it up, okay? Click Cancel, and then right-click to uncheck it so it collapses. 
For me, it's much easier to have it collapsed. I'm not distracted, and I can right-click on the view bar anytime to bounce around to other views, including more views, okay? And then finally, outside of the uh, default view here, the Gantt chart, below that you have what's known as the status bar. You can see that it's ready. If there's any issues, you'll be prompted here with that. You can also right-click on it, and you get additional options. Now, by default, you're going to have new tasks and new task mode notification. Let me go ahead and click off. What that does is that anytime you create a task, you get the option to come down here and click on it to say, okay, I want to schedule it manually or automatically. We'll cover that in a later training video. And you can see that mine was turned off because I right clicked on it and I unchecked it. So you can customize the status bar there, okay? Then over to the right, you got the different views here, the more popular views. You can see Gantt chart. It's shaded. I don't know if you can see that. It's not too dark of a shade, but that's the current view that I'm in. And you can see the others. You can hover over task usage, team planner, resource sheet, and reports. So those are the more popular views you can quickly go to just by coming down here. And then you get the zoom bar. And that's for the time scale here. So when you click and drag the slider, you can go ahead and click and zoom all the way out. So you're just looking at it by quarters here, okay? First half, second half, and, you know, click and drag to the right. So you can zoom all the way in to view it by hours, every couple of hours, okay? I'll go over how you can customize that a bit more later.